It's now 12 o'clock. We have 13 present. We'll call the session to order. And at this time, I'm going to call upon Senator Stewart, can you give us the opening invocation? Thank you. Start with roll call, starting with Senator Pretty Pate. Pretty Pate, Black Lodge. Stuart, Black Lodge. Other minutes in Reno. Not afraid, Ash Padicha. Covered it with large guys. Not afraid, three points. Deep green, narrow green. Go for the bulk walk. Real bird, mighty few. Backbone, mighty few. Stuart, mighty few. Old Karas Padicha. Shane Reno. Secretary of the House, what do we have? 13. Secretary of the House reports 13. We have a quorum. I'd like to thank uh, the Executive Legal for being here. And we has anyone, has everyone had a chance to review the agenda? If so, we'll call for a motion to adopt. Motion by Senator Stewart of Black Lodge. Second. Second by Senator Stewart of Mighty Few. Question. Question by Senator Not Afraid of the Lodge Grass District. All those in favor of adop adopting the agenda, raise your right hand. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Secretary of the House reports 13 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstained. That moves us on to the next item, which is actually old business, which we are addressing today is old business, so. Yes, sir, correct. The speaker, there's no new business to yes. so all old business. So I was going to deem this as a typo on our agenda that we're addressing old business today. There is no new business. No, okay. There will be some new business. There will be an LR of confirmation for the Education Committee, but that's after we handle our old business. So that brings us to old business. A joint action resolution of the Crow Tribal Legislature and the Crow Tribal Executive Branch entitled Final Approval of Amendment to Oil and Gas Lease between the Crow Tribal Indians and Blue Water Petroleum LLC. Just to bring everyone up to speed, this has been in committee for quite some time and was addressed in uh, January session, I believe, brought out then put back in the committee again. And at that time, it was introduced by executive. 
We had a motion to adopt, we had a second, and then when it came time to 30 minute presentation by sponsor, that's where we had a motion to put it back into committee. So at this time, we're at 30 minute presentation. So at this time, the floor recognizes executive legal Bill Watt. Sorry, Lord. Just need a motion to bring it back on the floor. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Sorry, Senators. Need a motion to bring it back onto the floor. Floor recognizes Senator Stewart of the Black Lives District. I'll make that motion, Mr. Speaker. Second. Bring it on the floor. We have a motion by Senator Stewart. We have a second by Senator Nodderfay of the Las Vegas District. Do we have a question? Question. Question by Senator Goesahead of the Prior District. All those in favor of bringing this item back onto the floor out of committee and back onto the floor, raise your right hand. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Motion carries with a vote of 13 yes, zero opposed, and zero abstain, which brings us to the at that time, we were at 30 minute presentation. So we will take up, we will come back into 30 minute presentation, which will bring us to recognizing executive legal Bill Watt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Secretary, members of the body, and guests. Um, Thanks, thank you very much for being able to address um, the body here on the um, long shot blue water oil lease. Again, this uh, involves heavy oil in the uh, prior area. And I'll try to make this uh, brief since most of the people here have participated in the various committee meetings over the last four or five months that we've had on this. Um, the, uh, but I will get start with a little bit of background. This lease was originally um, uh, negotiated by the Oil and Gas Committee, approved by this body in early 2008, and approved by the uh, Regional Director of the BIA on July 31st of 2008. <clears throat> it involves a um, 13,440-acre area, of which about 6,000 uh, mineral acres are owned by the tribe. Um, I think approximately that same amount owned by uh, uh, individual allotment owners, and uh, I think there is some fee minerals in there uh, as well. <clears throat> the, uh, the lease was for five years, so it expires uh, without us taking any action. It would expire on uh, July 31st of this year, um, and that's uh, what brings us here. As you all um, uh, recall, similar to what happened with the Mini Stars project. Shortly after this was approved, oil prices went down from you know $130 a barrel down to about $65 a barrel uh, by early 2009. Uh, long shot at that time uh, came to the committee, uh, oil and gas committee in the tribe, and said, "We we can't make this work at those oil prices with all that we have to do to uh, get that heavy oil out of the ground. It's just not economic. Uh, so we'll either you know." walk away or maybe we could make some kind of an extension. Um, we didn't take any formal action at that time uh, in terms of any uh, lease amendments or anything and kind of let it uh, drop for a little while. In um, late 2010, they came back after raising some more money and um, having the price of oil go up and said that they were interested in uh, you know reactivating that lease. Um, so in late 2010, uh, the former chairman of the executive branch agreed to, um, to, to waive the past non-compliance where they were supposed to drill one well a year um, and uh, go ahead and reactivate the lease, provided that they caught up on their drilling uh, one well per year and that they paid uh, all the bonuses that were due, a total of $10 an acre at that time, which, um, which Longshot uh, did. Um, then in uh, 2011, they assigned uh, most of Longshot's interest in the lease to Blue Water Petroleum, um, and as authorized by the approval jar that was consented to by the executive branch, and um, they began working to further develop the area. Um, they, um, uh, 
in the meantime, they also signed up uh, most of, uh, I believe, most of the allotment owners within that lease, that lease boundary. Um, and they also received the same bonus payments that the tribe did. They um, uh, would, what you call a piggyback on the Tribal Indian Minerals Development Act lease. So they have, they, um, have the same terms as what the tribe does. And that's authorized by the IMDA. So Longshot, uh, you know, then began, or, and Blue Water, uh, began um, working on, um, at, well, at that time in 2010, they recognized they probably needed an extension. They wanted some more acreage, and those were the main things, an extension of time and some more acreage. And um, without making any commitments, uh, the uh, former chairman indicated we'd be considering that and, and working on those discussions in the meantime. Um, so that, um, um, well, then they uh, developed their plan as to how they would recover this heavy oil. And if I could just walk up here for one second, I just wanted to tell you what, a, I think you all know what a five spot is. But, um, what they plan to do, this is one of the five wells that they did drill. Um, and they drilled it down into the tent sleep. I think it's 750 feet deep is all. Um, they plan to deepen that uh, by 300 feet to go down into the Madison Formation and tap the water there. So they, they, and they already have an APD from a, a BLM on that. So they will uh, deepen this water well, uh, deepen this well into the water, um, right over here, run it through a steam injection machine, uh, pump it down into the ground here where it says S, so, you know, the steam going down, and then they'll have four wells around it to recover that oil as it gets softened up and liquefied to be able to pull it out of the ground. And this five spot, as they currently see it, would be on a 40-acre parcel. Um, so um, as we get back into the water use, I'll kind of refer back to that again. But uh, when they talk about five spots, that's what, they're, that's what we're talking about. And they don't need all four of these wells here. They could recover some with just two or three. But they'll be determining how far they need to drill these wells and, and do, do some tests on the first five spot. Um, but the, uh, the wells that they did drill uh, into the oil indicated a you know, promising prospect in terms of uh, you know, the um, several factors that they looked at. And I don't have the technical expertise to tell you what they are exactly, but the amount of oil content in there and other factors that would make it uh, profitable to recover it. Excuse me. So, um, they, they proceeded along those plans. They uh, got APDs from BLM for to drill some additional wells already. Uh, they worked uh, for about eight months with the Environmental Protection Agency because that steam injection well, for that you have to get what they call an underground injection control permit, UIC permit. Um, I think it's called, there are various classes, a class two UIC permit. And um, EPA Denver region had never done one of those up in this area before. Um, you've probably seen recently somebody's now talking about doing it down in Wyoming, just, just announced in the last week. Um, but uh, they spent a lot of time uh, with EPA, and uh, EPA has issued them a full permit uh, to do the, that first steam injection well. So that brings us to uh, the lease amendments. And we, um, uh, introduced uh, these lease amendments originally, as you can see in your packet, in 2011. And um, not too much uh, activity on that until the last four or five months, but um, we have had quite a few discussions then uh, through the Natural Resources Committee. And I'll just give you a quick summary of the um, features then of the amended, um, amended lease amendments, um, the, the um, or revised ones from the ones that were originally introduced. First, and I think maybe the most significant aspect of it, is um, the, the committee um, and, and executive decided to ask them to forego the additional acreage. So we, rather than adding 4,516 acres to the lease as they originally proposed and, and the amendment originally specified, we just deleted that entirely. And uh, 
The thinking behind that is to, to um, let them go ahead and prove this out on the acreage they have. We think they have plenty of acreage to, to get their money back and to make some profit uh, on these 40 acre parcels within that um, 13,000 acre area. And once they've proven that up, then we think um, you know any additional acreage will be worth more in bonuses, maybe worth more in royalty. But that that's the time for the tribe then to uh, to try to um, get uh, more out of the lease than on this initial one, which is just proving that uh, that this can all be done in the first place. And I, I don't think it's an absolutely sure thing technically. They've got several different uh, questions out there, um, including how much oil they will recover. But they're, they're feeling pretty good about it, and they're getting um, able to raise money with these lease amendments uh, to provide some certainty that they'll be able to raise the money and get that done, or to um, get their current investors to go ahead and fork up that money. So uh, number one, we eliminated any extended acreage. So uh, this only the only extension here is an extension of time. Uh, so rather than expiring July 31st of this year, it will go on for two years and five months longer through December 31st of 2015. It's a, a little less than a two and a half year extension in what they call the primary term of the lease. Um, at the end of the primary term, they will be able to continue to lease any 1,280 acre blocks in which they are actually producing oil in paying quantities, which in this case means they've actually got an active steam injection field and, and they have all that investment, including probably a natural gas pipeline tied off of Williston Basin, um, tanks, uh, tr got a truck it, and, and all the infrastructure it takes to keep that oil warm and to get it produced. Um, the lease uh, amendments, as uh, you now have in front of you, I think in a red line, um, clarifies again that they have to be producing in paying quantities to hold any of those blocks, and they have to have a different five spot to hold each block. They can't carve off a little piece, a uh, piece of that 40 acre parcel and claim that they can now hold uh, 2,400 acres. So we clarified those items. Those I believe are pretty standard provisions in the oil leasing business. Um, they will pay an additional $5 per acre bonus uh, which is half the original bonus for half of the extended amount of time. So that will be a, an additional $30,000 payment to the tribe and something close to that to the allotment owners up in that area as well that have piggybacked on the tribal lease. <clears throat> I guess the next, um, so those are the, the main, uh, before I get to water, there's no additional acreage. We'll extend the time two and a half years they'll pay an additional bonus, and uh, we've clarified how the lease works at the end of the term. Uh, I know you're elaborating some of the history and the information. Uh, I, I, I signed a lease on there, but uh, it expires as a individual lot key, but it expires at 2016. And my question is this, so Blue Water has to come and extend that lease 2016, because that's what, what I signed. Uh, Senator, uh, on the debate portion is when you can raise that issue. Let's wait till we get to debate. We're still at 30 minute presentation. Once we go through the 30 minute presentation, then when we're asked for a recommendation from the committee chair and then go forward, that's when you can uh, ask the question, which is a good question, but that'll come at debate time. <laughs> Senator Rilward, you raised your hand as well. Say, okay, so we'll save that for debate. So we're still we're still in 30 minute pre presentation, which is proponents. The proponents of this resolution are the ones who are being recognized at this time. We'll proceed, Mr. Waterman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, <clears throat> because they need to inject the steam to get the to get the uh, oil out, they need water, and we um, you know they recognize us at the original lease. And the original lease terms provide that they, they will buy water from the tribe uh, at no less than five cents per barrel, um, uh, at no less than five cents a barrel, and have some metering uh, provisions and other things like that. Um, there was a lot of discussion in the committee about all that, and I think really, really um, 
pertinent discussion um, because it resulted then in some, uh, I think, major clarifications here. Um, there's concern about having enough water. Uh, and I just guess I just want to make um, clear that this lease amendment only gives the tribes commitment on what will sell them water for for the first eight five spots. After those first eight, uh, it's at the tribe's discretion. And again, we're thinking if it's successful and they're making a bunch of money, we'll be able to um, uh, up the water rate and participate in some of that, um, some of that newfound wealth uh, by, by charging more for the water. Um, the water would still be subject to permitting through the Crow Tribe Water Resources Department. Um, and now uh, with BIA approval, when we have our um, water rights ordinance approved, then it will all be done under the, the water rights ordinance, um, along with all the other stuff that's in the compact. Uh, and that, those requirements include, you know, being able to prove that it has no adverse effect on other nearby water uses, and that the water is available, uh, and that it's not going to, you know, do any environmental damage. Um, so what, what we're discussing here today just tells them how much they have to pay for the water if we have it, and if Water Resources Department and the BIA uh, grant you the water permits uh, and be subject to the conditions of those permits. As if you've seen the lease amendments, um, there's some pretty big numbers there. It says we'll, we'll sell you the first 10 million barrels at five cents a barrel, the next 10 million barrels at 10 cents a barrel, and after that, uh, no, no, you know, it, it's at the tribe's discretion as to the rate. That sounds like a lot of water, but you know, yesterday we put up on the board with the committee uh, a comparison. And uh, for that 40 acre area, um, for one of those five spots, uh, that's two, two and a half million barrels, that is one fourth of the first 10 million. Um, that two and a half million barrels translates into uh, 322 acre feet of water that would be used over a five year period. Because at the end of five years, they're anticipating they'll have all the oil out of that 40-acre parcel and have you know move on to a, the next one. Now, if you um, divide that by five years, and uh, as shown there, that's 64 acre feet per year of water for that five spot. And um, under, um, if you were to irrigate that same 40 acres, you you could not irrigate that same 40 acres to grow alfalfa with that much water. Uh, that much water would probably be less less than 32 acres worth of um, irrigated land. So, uh, by committing this water to to the oil recovery um, for that same 40 acres over that five-year period, uh, the tribe would receive $125,000 in payments for the water. Uh, at a 10 to 1 ratio and a one sixth royalty and $60 a barrel, we would receive $2.5 million in royalties for a total of something like $2.6 million over that five year period for that one five spot on that 140 acre section. So if you compare that um, uh, five, you know, $2.6 million over five years with uh, irrigating 32 acres worth of alfalfa, that, that's the difference in. Uh, in that water leveraging the wealth of the oil. Um, and, and so it's um, worth much more um, to uh, pull the oil out of it. And I just wanted to, again, point out that it's not forever. Once they get a water permit for a five spot, it will be limited, I believe, to a five year period. So we're not granting them any water rights um, or, or water use privileges forever. Uh, they'll have to permit each different um, water well. So I think that's a, a summary of the water provisions. Again, subject to all the permitting that's uh, necessary for any uh, water well. They're talking about producing 50 gallons a minute. That's the uh, capacity of the steam injector that they were last looking at. Uh, so you know, one well producing 50 gallons a minute is what, what they need. And we've discounted all this by 20%, um, and those are the figures there. Lastly, uh, the last uh, amendments that I wanted to mention uh, are also for the tribe's benefit. We um, will require them to disclose 
Uh, everything they inject into the ground, give us material safety data sheets and other information on that. You probably all read about BLM's fracking rules and, and how uh, oil companies are getting them, uh, uh, trying to resist that and, and even tribes because it slows things down. But as a matter of our lease, we'll be able to handle that however we want and make sure we know what's going into the ground. Uh, they're telling us, you know, it's only going to be water, um, maybe some other non-toxic chemical in a small quantity, but, uh, but we'll know what it is. And at this point, again, all of their um, the water permit will be subject to totally recycling the water, no wastewater discharge, no, no junk flowing out on the ground into a reservoir or something like that. So they'll disclose anything that goes into the ground. We also uh, added the right uh, to increase their bonding um, because if it is not as environmentally friendly as it is being represented now, we want to make sure that this uh, little company, that there's enough money to fix any damages they might cause. Um, as you can imagine, these um, their operator, Summit West, you know, doesn't have $10 million extra in the bank to pay damages. We, we want them to put that up as a bond if it's going to be necessary. Um, and finally, there are just a few uh, minor provisions clarifying the payment mechanism in the original lease uh, based on later experience and, and correcting a heading, I think. Uh, so that is a, a summary uh, of the lease amendment uh, as negotiated and discussed with the committee uh, yesterday. Um, and uh, the background on the Longshot Blue Water Prospect. And again, I think the, um, the general thrust of, of the, the tribe, of the executive and the legislature committee here has been to, to get them out there, get them started, get them producing some oil. Uh, and that by itself uh, should be worth some substantial royalty money for us. Uh, but it should also then increase the value of the rest of the oil that's outside their lease area so that uh, future leasing we can command a higher bonus, maybe a higher royalty, and, and um, uh, terms uh, more like what you know the tribes are getting up in the Bakken area where you got really, really great high producing wells with very little risk. So if we can take the risk out of it, um, get uh, prove that it can be done, have Blue Water prove it, then that should be to the benefit of the tribe in the long run. Um, with that, um, I would conclude the my presentation to answer, uh, if I may just go ahead and answer the question that um, um, Senator Goes Ahead brought up. Uh, I'm not sure about whether you will have to sign an extension or whether they'll have to come with you for an extension. Uh, we've um, said in our emails that uh, they will certainly pay that extra $5 uh, an acre bonus to the piggyback allotment leases, um, but yeah, this was signed sometime after ours, and we can sure check into that with BIA on what the procedure is there. Um, there well, that concludes the presentation. I'm sure available for any question. Uh, I guess I would just, well, one, one more moment. Um, we spent quite a bit of time with the Water Resources Department with Clay Gregory and Sean walks over ice over there. Um, and I think uh, despite some initial concerns, when we looked at all the numbers and things, um, they would agree that this is a reasonable way to handle the water. Um, Sean has gone out there with uh, David Lopez, and uh, we read a letter into the committee record yesterday uh, with David's opinion uh, that uh, there are no nearby wells that would be affected. This is deeper than any other well, and it's at least a mile and a half away. Taps into a completely different aquifer, uh, and there shouldn't be any adverse effects. Uh, but the final determination of that is still for the water permit to be done. Uh, we've also reviewed this with the Division of Energy and Mineral Development down in uh, Denver. And um, last week after we had finalized these amendments, uh, they concurred by email that they thought uh, these were all reasonable and, and uh, good in the tribe's best interest to do to, to again encourage this development there on the prior heavy oil to get started. Um, EPA has approved the UIC permit, BLM has approved the APDs, uh, they've approved the deepening of the water well subject to, to blue water getting a valid water right from the tribe. So uh, everything is in place except for the water permit uh, after the, if this lease amendment is passed. Um, so I thank you very much for your time and again uh, available for any questions.
Second gentleman arms, how much time do we have left in the 30 minutes? We have seven minutes remaining in a 30 minute presentation. Seven minutes. Going once, going twice, seven minutes remaining. Third and final call. Okay, that takes us to the next item, which Speaker of the House will ask the Chairman of the Committee for approval or disapproval. So at this time, the floor recognizes Senator Stewart of the Black Lodge District. Speaker, Secretary, members of the body, and invited guests. Um, at this time, we had a meeting May 15, 2013, Wednesday. The time was 2.01 when we started. Invocation given by Senator Gozahed. Ten members present, and the topic of the meeting was the Oil and Gas Lease Blue Water Petroleum LLC. Much discussion concerning the water, much discussion concerning the, the term, the lease, and, and um, other areas. But overall, we had, we had much, um, 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 there was a proponents, the proponents were, you know, as um, like Senator Not Afraid stated, you know that he said for the record he was going to be for this he stated and at that time shortly after that a motion was made by senator hugs seconded by senator lee were not afraid from the lodge grass district a question called by the seo other medicine and a motion for recommendation to pass so mr speaker secretary members of the body we do have a recommendation from the committee for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Now that brings us to debate. The floor is now open for debate. Earlier I had two gentlemen raise their hand. The floor at that time was uh, Senator Goes Ahead. So yours is already answered. Senator Railward. <coughs> Speaker, secretary, members of the body, guests. Um, I just, you know, this um, been kind of busy with my other uh, committees, you know, on gaming and education here and there. And I, on this Blue Water, I think I only attended like one meeting. Um, but uh, see, I wasn't uh, too familiarized with what was really going on. And I guess I, I I had an opportunity yesterday to ask some questions, you know, and that's probably the, the best time to ask questions is during that committee meeting. But um, I guess uh, some of the questions that I would like to answer is this Blue Water, uh, this company, how proven are they? You know, is uh, this company a middleman? Do they have the money to provide this, you know, and it seems to me like our water is pretty cheap, five cents a barrel. And, but uh, as we calculate, you know, I, uh, uh, after so many barrels of water, we get uh, money off of that. So I guess those are my questions. And um, uh, was this the only company that came forward when there's hundreds of other companies that could have probably almost gave us a better deal. And uh, also, how long do they have after this two year, um, uh, after they lease it for two years, how long do they have to explore? Do they explore right away or, and after, after they find oil and everything's all good, how long after that do they have uh, to keep this? Uh, those are my questions, Mr. Speaker. All right. The floor organizes as a legal counsel, Mr. Watt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the questions. Um, I don't, Blue Water is not a large company. Uh, they're 
working with investors every day to uh, make to try to raise the money for this. The last I understand, they uh, have uh, people with the funds ready to go, and they're they're feeling confident, you know, with these amendments that uh, it can be done. But I think it would be um, uh, well, it would be just not true to think that this is a substantial company. They were created for this purpose. Some, you know, some of the uh, common owners are working uh, in Canada and around the state at various places. Um, but uh, Blue Water and the operators, some of West, uh, you know, are really special purpose, small uh, wildcat independent oil companies. Um, so they, so that's why the bonding is pretty important. Uh, and um, as long as they keep up the performance, they keep the lease. But if they don't, then they, they will lose it. Um, I guess your question about other companies, I, I'm not aware of any other company approaching the tribe um, in the last five years uh, wanting to do anything on the oil up there. Uh, it's possible they have. I'm pretty sure the Oil and Gas Committee never talked to anybody else about prior or anybody else ever came and, and uh, asked uh, if they could um, you know, enter into lease negotiations with prior. So they would seem to be the, you know, the, the only prospect who's interested in getting it going. I know they, they have some um, uh, leases right off in, in the Edgar area, right off the reservation. I think they found um, that the oil in those deposits is not quite as good as the oil as the deposits on the on the reservation side. Um, so as far as I know, they haven't uh, committed any steam injection. Um, you know that investment from the steam injector, which I think is five hundred thousand to a million dollars. Um, so they are a very small company, but there does not seem to be any other prospects. We've not had anybody else approach us. In terms of time to explore, this, this all gets into that primary term stuff. Um, you know, if they, any 1,280 acre block that has production, which would be a steam injection machine and, and those fi a five spot, um, they'll be able to hold that 1,280 acre section as long as they're producing oil. That's the standard lease, uh, standard oil and gas lease term. Uh, of course, along thereafter as they're producing and paying quantities. Uh, when they stop producing, the lease will expire. Uh, you know, typically, the way the oil companies will do that, uh, is being done in the Bakken all the time, they'll try to uh, get production established in two or three blocks. Uh, so they'll do the wide exploration there to, to get those blocks producing and hold them. And then they'll infill drill it over time uh, as they have more time. So as long as they're producing out of that block, then they have time to come back in and put more five slots in. But, uh, so uh, I don't know their specific plans here, um, but that would be the standard operating procedure. Um, so I, the, the, the real exploration really occurs in that first phase. And, uh, if they're able to produce, then uh, that's you know a more of a sure thing, and they can uh, do what they call development drilling as opposed to exploratory drilling. Those, those are excellent questions. So those, so they have two years to do that, right? When we agree today, if we all vote yes, they got two years to to get to to get to get production, production, to put get a steam injector and all that, and produce oil and get it delivered to refineries. So that's how long it's going to take for any kind of uh, you know, royalties or bonuses and whatnot. And then after that, we extend them for another, would you say, two and a half or 12 years? Or? Uh, it, it goes on as long as they're producing at that point. Um, but we should, I think they, they want to get this thing started right You know, this, this year. So if that first buy spot is successful, we should be seeing royalties before the end of this year on that one. And I think they'll want to do you know, two or three others. There's only so many they can do because it's not like just drilling one hole. You've got to put the steam in, the water, and then you have to have more than one well to recover. Hey, um, I just want to make a statement here. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead, Senator Robert. company. Unless they have na ispaula do agin, bala hindi de maku too cool. Then bala ko kusibios na investors kira 
，比较比较是老家的事，比较嘛实在。诶，那看比你个人啥哈子，我勒，每比个都看了十八老师个啦，诶，个不弄个啦个，你像嘿 ，two years three months， 那不勒是，大概 investors 可能包勒阿得勒，那，包勒阿得勒，不能弄土地这个个，我个，比个比个可以个勒，所以，巴萨不是啊。In a company get ye gym proven get outside from our work, holy or to you know. So bigger my shit chat big I'm big I'm thinking big. Like a what a mizaha jet cut up bawa jir because you know oil with that's been there for a long a lot of chicka zero to go play what side bala uh Sawa cikal ini koi kau tak, begini masih jaya kerja. Kalau aku, I might be wrong. Kita amik koi kerja kem. Azab se, ek terin ala siha defence ray kerja lagi. So that's where I'm, I'm standing today. All right, I hope. Floor organizer Senator Gulza, the Prior District. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, members of the body. Uh, my, my, I'm, I'm going to, uh, yesterday, you know, in the meeting, uh, we wrote a lot of, uh, this extension is for two years and five months. This is what we are addressing today. But if it's producing, then it's for the life of, the oil, as long as it's producing, then uh, it's going to produce. It's crude oil that nobody wants to go after. It's crude oil that nobody, no company wants to mess around with. And, and you're kind of being familiar with it, but now coming down to the water usage and uh, the steam, they want it to get going, but it always, they run into some roadblocks or nature itself because it was uh, winter time and some of the uh, senators here we went to that one oil well uh, about a year ago and we visited that area and but the oil is there it's in the sand but it's crude it's, it's so much tar crude is tar so that's why we need to steam it and then extract that oil and and the roads to those places are uh, they need right away as well too and it's all dirt so that's why they have to get to it during the summer and i believe that's why they're trying to expedite this and have an extension extend this lease today to, to another two and a half years so they would have time before winter sets in again or the fall time I understand all that, but I know that if we look for another company, like I'm believing, I'm just going to be, I like everybody to know, okay, CJ and Junior went to uh, the Brother Tribe, uh, North Dakota, this past, last week or so, or last week, well, they have a company, is what I'm hearing it, and none of you, some of you don't even have heard this, but I just listened to him last night about his concerns is bringing a company, this is a wildcat. Remember, I understood what the wildcat is, is that they, a wildcat drill is what, what just happened. It's a wildcat, they've never done it before. That's a wildcat, wildcat drill. It's an exploration, first time. And now, there, when they went, for the trip, I believe they have an oil company, right? That are willing, that's what he's saying, but he did say it, but I'm saying it for him. So do we look at that? Maybe look at that they want to go into the crude oil because it's Bakken over there. It's big money over there. But the difference over here is it's crude oil. Crude oil, but it, it's tar. So did they know that? Did you guys tell them, well, we got some crude oil, are you guys interested, or whatever? But 
I wasn't there, so that, that's just something. If they want to come and do a well cat on our crude, crude oil or invest in blue water, I guess they're looking for money. I know that because remember when the positive change uh, team just got in and we talked about this and was it Tom Hines was there? The geologist, Tom Hines, he was there and then he was explaining this in the chairman's office and quite a few of us were there and some of us, some of the senators weren't in there either. So, uh, and then, and it, it's, it's a good, good question. I believe it's a fair question. Do we want somebody to come that has the money or the investors or the, do they want to come? But we're going to have to wait again, you know? So I guess I'm kind of riding the fence, <laughs> but it's the prior district as well, too. And, and I know, just like I said, I'm, I'm individually involved because I signed a lease and that lease expires in 2016. <coughs> because, you know, I got the letter, yeah, I got $1,000. That's that's about three, four years ago. Three, about three years ago is when I signed the lease, but it expires in 2016. <coughs> And that's what we call the Willow Creek area. So, so you know, the, you know, it's a good question, fair question. Uh, but Blue Water is not here either. <laughs> you know, to answer those questions, our questions either. I think I believe they should be here. Well, at least one of them. So. You, Ko Shri Wahat, you're welcome. So, thank you. All right, we're still in debate. Oh, I got it. Uh, my other question, I had a question. Uh, it's going to be, the water usage is going to be five cents a barrel. <coughs> and then, uh, when was it going to turn it, after it's producing, it's going to turn to 10, 10 cents? Mm -hmm. That part, uh, can you uh, explain that, uh, Mr. Speaker? Yes. Floor organizes executive legal counsel, Mr. Watt. Um, as the amendment is written, it would be the, the first 10 million barrels are at five cents. That would let them do four or five spots over a five year period each. And, and then for the next one, it would pop up to 10 cents. For the next four or five spots, and then after that, whatever the tribe uh, can negotiate with above that. Does that answer your question, Senator Goza? Yes. Okay. All right, we are still in debate. Floor organizer Senator Stewart of the Black Lodge District. I oh, hope, Mr. Speaker. Um, yeah, I, you know, it, it's. It wasn't just the one time that we went up to um, Three Affiliate Tribe. We've been, you know, a lot of discussion with, um, at the time, Ken Hall was the, basically the cabinet head for Three Affiliate Tribe there. And he also, by the board, was um, voted in as the chairman for the Missouri River Resources. And, and yeah, at this, mo at this moment right now, um, we, we did talk about, you know, some of the, some of the um, different comparisons, and um, visiting with um, Dave Williams, he did show us everything that they they're going after and looking after and looking looking at what their plan is versus their their potential and what what the area does hold. So we got we were privy to a lot of information that, you know, most people weren't which was good, and they're willing to work with us. There's an open door there. They want to work with the Crow Tribe, this Natural, Natural Resources Committee. And when, but the thing is, is um, when you talk about Balkan and you talk about tent sleep, it's apples to oranges. You know, right now you got people f fighting over, and you know, fighting over, you know, places to live, shoot, it's, it's proven over there. Um, the thing is that, you know, and I'm, I'm not opposed to, you know, bringing in, um, you know, companies to try to do some work here and give us a good go. 
But the thing is this, and it even happened at the Balkan. They, they weren't always at $4,000 an acre to lease. They weren't always at $6,000 an acre. They weren't always at 10000 in Williston. They started at $5, $10, $30 an acre on the lease. And a lot of the leases are coming up. And the uh, minimum price is $4,000 an acre. Uh, when, we, when we do the comparisons between, um, you know, I know oil is oil, black, greasy. But, you know, when you're looking at the QCs, the quality, there's it's apples to oranges. And like, like Duke's stating here about the, the crude, we're talking about tar. Right now in this area that that um, we're working with over there in the prior district, we got two $2.5 million invested in this. And they did tap into an area they did tap into an area that will provide. It will produce. We've seen the samples and that tent sleep is just plump full of um, that crude that Duke's talking about. We got to steam it. We're not fracking it. We got to get in there with that the hot steam, so then that way we can liquefy it to pump it up, and then refine it. And my thinking is this: is right now, while we're trying to prove this up, while we're trying to prove this area up, why don't we let them spend their money proving it up? So we don't have to spend our money on something that ain't proven yet. So in the meantime, while they spend their money, we're entitled to this to this um, um, data. So once they prove it up and we know it's there, Duke was there, Jay, myself, Canute, Lucky, I forgot who else was there. That when was this that time? But we seen it for ourselves. We have a little lab there. We've seen the samples, and there, I have no doubt in my mind that that they're gonna. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be nice to see that thing being produced. But the thing is, is Dave, we're talking. You know, 1280. Might seem like a lot of acreage, or maybe a little more than that. Might seem like a lot of acreage, but it's not when you're talking about 2.2 million acres. And when you're talking about proving up a small area. So then that way, we can generate competition. Competition's good. Don't forget there's an assignment clause in this. When the Missouri River resources get, get all their um, ducks in a row, because right now they don't even have a rig. They don't have a rig. They got the money. They don't have a workforce. They don't have a rig. But they've got the money. They've got the gumption. And they're getting moving. They're getting ready. That's why they're reaching out to the legislative branch, to the crows look at their laws, to look at our laws, and try to see what they can do for themselves. And, which is nice, you know, they're, they're moving, they're moving forward. It's, they've got no workforce and a lot of money, and no laws. We got good law, we got workforce, and we got no money. So, you know, in, in, in um, going back to the issue, I feel that it'd be nice to have these guys prove up that resource in the area. Get something going now, because like Duke was saying, we're going to have to wait anyway. You know, but they're already proven now. To get into this whole thing again, we're going to have to be going after all these permits, BLM, APD fees, water, all these things that it took us this long to get to this point. And I hate to say this, but when we try to do development on Indian land, it's it's tough. And this ain't the only oil play in, in on the reservation. If anybody sat in with Dave, Dave Lopez on any of this um, um, the the potential here on the reservation, we've got oil here and there. We just don't have the Balkan. Our Balkan is named different Right now, what I'm thinking is we got to we got to get this to get proven up 
will use their data and then possibly start looking at leasing other areas or bigger areas or even go after the assignment of this lease. Maybe the Crow Tribe wants to establish, like, like Junior and I were talking about, establish our own oil and gas company, the Crow Tribe. The Adopsons are doing it with the Missouri River Resources. The Crow Tribe can do it as well. And then that way we can get into some working interest issues. Not just passive, not just passive royalty, not just 5149, but actually get into some working interest, ultimately, like Red Willow, 100% ownership. But we gotta start baby steps. We don't have no proven fields in that area, and that's where we're at today, is we're working on proving that area up, but we're not gonna use our money to do it. They're gonna use their money. They're gonna risk. They're gonna take the risk. And at the same time, that data is provided, that data is available to the tribe. We can go after it. I mean, it's, it's, it's our options. It's our opportunities. As, as soon as they prove those areas up, it, it's just like the Balkan. As soon as it was proven up, look at it now. You got so much oil play over there. You drive in there at night, you got flares all over the land. And it, it's, it, it's, it's, there's opportunity everywhere. That's what we need to do. And that's where we're at today. Hopefully we look at pushing this through and proving up a resource that I know that's there. And then make sure that when we go after this whole thing, the big enchilada basically, then it's we're going to go after more. Then we can we have negotiating leverage and power to go after more dollars and more areas of opportunity. So the crows will have revenue streams coming in for as long as that that oil flows. And then the opportunities for the local people with the jobs in that district. So with that, I, just, I you know. As a proponent of this lease, um, I'm not opposed to competition. It'd be great to have competition. Right now, if the Crow Tribe did a restaurant on this on this reservation, Pup Thompson has some competition then. But right now he don't. So where do we go? Competition's good. Thank you, Senator. We're still in debate. Senators, four organized senator goes ahead of the prior district. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, Secretary, uh, members of the body, and uh, uh, thinking of lawyers. Uh, I just remembered that meeting, uh, just as a comment. Uh, Tom Hines, I wish he would have wrote it down, but what he shared with us is about the permitting. The permitting cost uh, is costing 6000 or oil well. 65. 6500 6500 For off reservation, it's hundred dollars. To get a permit from the state of Montana and sometimes it doesn't even take that long. And and I remember uh, Tom Hines was sharing with us that because of that application for the permitting, they made one mistake. So the bureaucratic red tape that they had, he had to go through, he was just sharing with us that day. And it was just one, so they denied that permit and they have to fill the whole application again, to start from the beginning and pay it again. So they're forking out money. So he was just telling us you know, what, what, how, how uh, his side of the story of the permitting, of what they have to go through. And then see, that's the bureaucratic red tape, and that's what <laughs> the federal law says. And, and and just like I said, hundred dollars off the reservation as long as you're permitting, and that's even faster. They do a faster job, but the bureaucratic red tape is what we're up against as well, too. So, and 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 not only that, it, it is a good point. If we 
we don't have the money, just like the late chairman always say, we're, we're resource rich and cash poor. We still are today. We're resource rich and cash poor. We ain't got the money, but yeah, there's investors out there. But if we get this exploratory going, then you bring in the competition. Then you can say, hey, I got this kind of oil. If, if they really want to do get the crude oil, just like uh, David Lopez while Tom Hines on that day when we were there at the Willow Creek area where he explained to us towards prior is a higher elevation in the, in the rock and the, the, uh, the, the how, how do you say that? The, the terrain is a lot higher and getting to the oil but here in the Crow area, Crow Agency, Harden area, you can get to the oil, which is not crude, is actually oil. So those are like the apples and oranges from what he shared. And what, I'm just recollecting some of the things that I, I remember being from a geologist. David Lopez was telling him, telling us the same thing. Because the oil is more liquid here, than it is up there because of the terrain. And, and so anyways, that's just something to think about. And, you know, you know, whatever your decisions are, you know, we'll respect, I'll respect that. You know, each and every one of us are decisions. So it just, because some of you guys aren't there and we can't be all there in some of these meetings. And I would say it like this too, and some of you guys should be there, you're not there. The one that always says that. Uh, anyways, uh, that's how I've learned, you know, especially coming from the geologist. Remember when we went to Tom Hines? He had, and, and it was almost about 700 feet. It was, I think, it was 640 to 608 feet is where that one drill is. And then they showed us all the uh, under a microscope. He said, "This, this is the oil." But this is the crude oil, that's why we have to steam this, to liquefy that tar into oil. And then he had a, a chart, how they drilled it, and the way he, you know, looking at a chart, and he said, this is where exactly where, where your oil is here. And he showed us. And that really made a lot of sense to all of us that were there that day. So, the Balkan is, you know, it's there, that's, like you said, apples and oranges is really different. Because it was already proven, so that's why everybody's coming in. Okay, uh, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. We're still in debate. I'd just like to add a comment. Uh, I raised three issues yesterday. My first issue was a termination clause, and that was answered in committee yesterday. At least will terminate in 2015. Then, uh, Senator Rilbert, I know your concerns. And we're talking with, uh, we all have friends and family out there in Fort, Fort Berthel. And I know a lot of them, the first ones that had struck oil first, their leases were, were quite small. But later on, as they learned that there was a lot of oil there, the ones who they, uh, at least from later on are the ones who actually made the money, but the first ones are the ones that took the risk. It's a risk. Business is a risk. So and that's how I see this. So I was more comfortable after we have a, the amendments in your states, we're only going to give them one small portion of land to start off with. They're, they're originally asking for, correct me if I'm wrong, Senator Stewart, I think over 4,000 acres of what they're asking for, but we said no, just one section, the, the, the five spot. And then from there, we'll go on. Yes, so then, and then later on, we come back to the table to renegotiate then. But they have to find the product first. And I believe that's what they did. They found the product, but now they want to move forward. But at this time, we're saying we can move forward on this area alone, no others. Anything in the future, we'll have to come back for renegotiation, for further negotiations. So the term that I kept hearing a lot is flip. That's where they make their money. 
the company, the small company will come in, discover the oil, and then sell out to the large company, which you are talking about, Senator Real Word, the big ones that will come in, because the big ones will not take the risk. They have to find a product first, and then they come in once they, that's how, the, that's how their business is conducted is, they buy out the smaller company then, and that's what it's called flipping. The only, my only concern with the flipping is that, in talking with people from Fort Berthold is that we want to make sure that when the smaller company sells out to the large company, we want to be sure and get a benefit from that as well. So like, we have to look at the, the Lati to make sure that they benefit too when this company sells out, as well as the tribe, if it's tribal land. So we want to make sure we're learning. What, we're, what I did was want to learn from what they should have done and what to look out for. So with that, that's, that's uh, just how business is conducted. You know, and the body speaks. So whatever the body decides today, that's what we go with. So Senator Railbird. Speakers, secretary, members of the body, guests, you know, uh, my, what I wasn't, I'm not uh, too worried about it, but I know business is a risk. I understand that. But you know, I, I come to a point where probably get nickel and dime here on our res, and that's what I'm tired of. You know, I, I, me, I'm thinking big. And buzz up, set possibilities, get out of the place. And I understand that there's a risk and we have to start somewhere. I understand all of that. Because just like some of you guys, I read too. And that was cheap. And so those are my concerns is that why why hina company is in here what could I blash for that in here we okay hina gunish follow up as I do later him buzz up say risk risk a tie large big little guy that him because concerns about him go say what if I'm wrong about it then I'm wrong it uh, big I'm looking for something bigger color. There's companies out there that are I believe willing to, to do this but because we never search for it. I think we went with the first one that came. And we've never asked, the executive never asked, we use this company, asked this. We got oil here, it, uh, that's just my statement there. I understand that we got to take a risk. We got to start somewhere, and uh, we're not we're not gonna make a lot of millions of dollars right off the bat. I understand that. It uh, if, if it's about time we think big, big. Again, okay, we uh, we always use these companies. We wanna what I most got, and then we we follow their terms. Can I, you know, and if they buy if they already say there's crude oil in there, then it's gonna happen. Uh, you know, I think they'll be willing to become a So that's all I gotta say at home. Thank you, Senator. Uh, just to make a point, uh, this has been in in committee for quite some time, the 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 original, yeah, and yeah, but I'm just going to show you that this has been here since 2008, and we weren't in office when it was first introduced and voted on it the first time. Yeah, the beginning March 18th of 2008. <coughs> you know, and when it was first brought in, it was voted on with a vote of 14 to two at that time. So there was two that voted no, and that was uh, Senator Hogan and Senator Covers Up, who had voted no at that time. So it's, it's been quite a while, and like I said before, the, the body speaks. You know, and we're still in debate. Organize the Secretary of the House Oak Grove. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I gotta realize this been ongoing since 08, but the speaker said 
Uh, we passed it back then, and they started, they waited for their permit until 2011. They went to the permit out of people to start drilling and stuff. We went to visit it last year, went to get to change the tire. <laughs> but anyway, um, I thought, so they, my junior should I say, you know, is this really worth it? You know, and I'm kind of, I'm debating it. I think she would be getting the idea. I'm kind of right in the fence. I'm not really sure which way to go. I mean, is it going to really benefit the tribe or, you know, I don't know. I, I, it's hard for me to say yes. It's hard for me to say no. But, you know, I don't know. I haven't really been convinced. At that time, I thought, in 2008, I thought, well, why not? You know, nothing else has been happening there for a long time. So why not? There's so many variables, there's so many changes. One of my concerns is that the water injection, I mean, they're, they're saying it's going to be okay, but is it actually going to be okay? I mean, you know, we don't know that. So I don't know. I, I, there's just so many questions on my mind. I was, I was, uh, I'm just going to, I'm just letting you guys know that, you know, <laughs> I don't know. So I might probably abstain, I don't know. Oh. Thank you. For organized Senator Stewart of the Black Box District. Um, real quick, um, just to just to add to that, you know, um, um, Secretary um, Oak Crow was there at the time, and as well as um, Senator Goes Ahead and myself, Manuel. And at, t at that time, it was long shot. Now it's blue water. So when we talk about flips, it's flipped three times or twice. It went from long shot, summit west, blue water. And through all these companies' effort, it's not just one company. There was actually three companies involved here. It, it, it got to this point and we finally got through BLM through our water our water permits and yeah like the Canute stated since 2008 and we're in 2013 and do we do we wait five more years you know I mean to get all these permits or you know or do we prove up a small piece of acreage and you know, just bringing in others, you know. If it flipped twice already, the assignment clause, I'm sure it probably will again. And then like the the issue of the, the um, you know, the exit clause. If they want to go more acreage, they're going to have to renegotiate with the tribe which is the plus. Yeah, if they find oil there, they might, they might produce it and produce it as well, but they're going to want to go after more acreage. Well, that's going to leave it up to negotiations for them and the tribe. So, that's, that's what I got, all I got to say. All right, thank you. Floor organizers, Senator Not Afraid, Blocks Grass District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Secretary and members of the body. Laga, um, this is this is good dialogue, good debate. Uh, we all have a right to represent our constituency and uh, disagree or agree. And uh, it's just, uh, it's good healthy debate. I, I don't think uh, I would uh, condone to say that whether we were at meetings or not would say that I don't have a right to an opinion whether I went to those meetings or not. I mean, we're all busy. We all have our own committees. We all have uh, our own goals and objectives. And to say that, well, just because he didn't show up, well, that's too bad. 
you should have been there. I, I don't agree with that, Speaker. I don't agree with the, we, we're all equal here. We're all elected and we're all from our respective districts. Uh, today is a new debate. We have a right to disagree. Um, I have a right to agree. Uh, if we're talking about oil development on the Crow Indian Reservation. Uh, Jack Westwood, Chile, up above Lodge Grass. Uh, and the oil well's been there for years. And meanwhile, while Absaloga, while we're trying to get our all our ducks in a row, he's making money every day. Because in the past, the individual acquired mineral rights from a tribal member illegally. So what do we do about that? I mean, do we do we stand and wait around for things to happen, or do we make things happen? You know, again, I, I I'd like to uh, move forward. I, I respect the opinions of those that disagree or have questions. It just, that's what debate is all about. Mr. Speaker, I'm looking to be a proponent of the proposal that's on the floor right now. I hope. Thank you, Senator. Forward and the Senator covers up. Yeah, I knew I got my story there. <laughs> well, that, uh, the actuality is that he's there uh, pumping oil and former chairman that the, she passed on now at Actor about it said, oh, you can't do nothing about it. said, well, uh, I think you can do something, you know. But uh, that's the issue, uh, just like uh, from long shot to blue water, just like something like uh, Bill Watts sitting here and everybody's against him, goes and changes thing to Roger Renfield, but still Bill, you know. So that's kind of the concept that uh, we're looking at now and everybody's concerned that we want to develop, but we're scared to develop, and that's the thing. Uh, we need to be positive about ourselves. The executive didn't come over here, and they send their representative over here. What do they have to say about it? Did they go talk to North Dakota people? Did they go visit that area? You know, those kind of things that everybody that want to be positive change, uh, that's the kind of thing that I see. They need to be there addressing, come back telling us what they saw. We're not the negotiators, they are. So that's the thing that I see now that, uh, you know, kind of floating around here. So like uh, me, uh, just like on that uh, long shot, I didn't agree with them because I figured they just want to hang on to something that uh, they would attract other oil companies. Same way with this company here, and that's the act we're taking. So me, you know, I ain't gonna write for that an offense, I'm just saying, oh, you know. So, you know, that's the thing that you have to be positive about yourself to be able to get someplace, not using hearsay and stuff. You, I know myself, I see what's going on, but we always want to rely on somebody else. And that's the thing that uh, we're coming to now, is we're flip-flopping in this way and that way. So, you know, that's the thing that we know what's going on, we see what's going on. So that's the thing that I, I'll stand, stand my ground, you know. So that I want to say, oh. Thank you, Senator. Floor organized Senator Stewart of the Black Lodge. Just one more, Mr. Speaker, and I respect that. You know, that's that's true. As a leader, you make a stance, sometimes it's popular, sometimes it ain't popular. But either way, someone's not going to like what you stood for, and there's always going to be someone that likes what you stood for. So, you know, you can't stand the heat. Don't sit here. You know, that's just the thing. And I, I you know, I, um, I applaud that. Um, what, I, what I did want to state is this, that, um, you know, when we did go to, um, Newtown. It wasn't just that one trip. We're gonna, we're actually gonna be bringing them here, and uh, North Segment Community Economic Corp is gonna be coming in, 
as well as Missouri um, Missouri River Resources CEO Dave Williams and the councilman Ken Hall. So they're going to be here, and um, I know um, one of the guys that sits on the the um, corporation, good friend with um, Duke, kept asking us, "Where's Duke? Where's Duke?" He said. So he's got some fans over there. Um, so in a way, you were in a meeting. You were there, and he's our ambassador. That that, that fellow there. So you know, and it, and it is. You know, what Junior is talking about, you know, Senator Robert, he's he's thinking big, and that's true. I mean, I applaud that. And, you know, where we stand on this vote, we walk away, you know, we, what we're all doing here is we're standing up for our people and how we feel. And, you know, we, if we want to, you want to make some money or if you feel like there's a better deal around the corner then you know that's that's our opinion and and um the, but the thing is, is is this is that the missouri river resources do want to come here and we never talked about prior but they do want to come here and do business with the tribe they got first right of refusal in the balkan that means they're the ones that can say no first over there. They had, they, by, by council authority, they were given that first right of refusal. And so, and yet they want to come here and, and help us get us off the ground. So I see where Junior's going with this. And we talked about it, but there's a lot of opportunity that's going to come in the near future. And at the end of the month or beginning of June, they're going to be coming in. So with that, as a proponent, again, if we can move forward, if not, we got some more to speak, then fine. But um, I'm going to stand my ground and I'm going to vote yes. Thank you, Senator. We're still in debate. Floor organizes Senator D. Crane of the prior district. <laughs> Secretary, body. Now, <clears throat> yeah, maybe you not know, to be quiet at Bapu here. I want to go to the school and I drew a graph. Cat graph community. He was a Naya Wale Nati, Wale Nati, Bakan Nati. Took Spala was a cat, the Malaya, the New York, the Dow, and then what am the school to start? She started. Make Step ahead, get out of the And big proponent, And I'd like to say thank you. Thank you, Senator. Four guys, Senator, not afraid of the Lodge Grass District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, members of the body, Senator D. Crane, Maje Guptai, Taj, that's it. it it brings into uh, remembrance Fabin Bagagosa Biuka Vijue Basago 19 Sawish Golok Baezadumi Walehu Walajan Black and White Kadamoga Kaptila Maezadu Kik Bakalion Kaptila Vijayak Kadi in a Talashibide Obaduki Bottom, bottom garden. Here the kagon goes. Ma, ma is aduki. Here the alawak kagon kuala tuki. Kagon asab se kanamion na osi desa lagurush malayodi hak. 
Azab Segala, they were going to start to drill. Kowaba, Stockman, Shiwazo, Zashigaza, the BIA, then ranchers that I want to heal on this Crow Reservation. Hey, Gawa, hey, Absalukish, Talish, Talashbidish, Dutulu, Ishpalawish, the Gilang Lisa's ball to Kabiwao, Hagip Mishu, and Bakush Majito, Dip. Damek this sala who look call a tribal council would date to before 1948 going superintendent daily damek this sala Lisa's boss a mule boy and call a lad cap group and development ojik the reality is mr. speaker the oil is there on this reservation and the development was stopped in the early days because of greed, because of special interests. And I believe that we need to find out, hey, and resubmit our interest in finding out if it's there or not. And to find out that it's there, those days are not there anymore. We've proven it by the passage of Cloud Peak, by the passage of uh, other uh, mile, milestone deals that this body has approved in recent times in the last several months. Now, I believe that we need to revisit that exploration and I believe that that purpose is here today. And once we establish that that oil is there and we expand on that lease, I believe it would be an opportunity that opportunity would be there of what Senator Rilbert is suggesting that we establish our own company as a nation we establish that hey now we need to ask for the big bucks we need to ask for what we are worth and then we can move forward with the acreage and actually go hey I bring in those consultants and move forward and it's not that I'm, I'm not uh, disrespecting the opinions that say, wait, wait hold on. I mean, I'm not saying that, Mr. Speaker. All I'm saying is let's find out what's there and then capitalize on it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Floor organizer, Senator Gozahed. Uh Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, Secretary. Yeah, again, no. What I'm hooked by in a in a Lawrence Senator Lee Crane, a Baba Mushuboa, a Taraji Bada, Bob Poha, Kodak, a Kalek Taraji Bada, Kara Karobudu Kanik, uh, like some Misha, he wants to call it up. He wants some. Masa bat the door tak dao. Oil company ke dah. Tukka ik sajadiya door tak dao. Eka hirage na wala mukha kate che na na Leroy Senator not afraid. Baba Mashubwa na awayage shole ka cap to do in the twenties I feel for his gig. Ali Jawal da hazu. Eka na talaju ke dege na shole cap ko da hazu. You know, Kole, Bravish Sak, Bill, Bravish, no, Boxal, from Alija Walsh, the whole Kalaka site. You know, Stockman Hart, Chair, not after the Magic Subs, a bill, Stockman's. Stockman's Kadeja Walsh, those are the cattle ranchers, is what he's talking about. Those, then, he's presented to the Rishbi Cat, Duck Tut, who are always a chill cook, Kazish Palaz, he will have father. A deal of Hijikia Gago, Yagi, a Mago, she gave with that. And no abet, Kamina, Kamasaji, you can Yagi, but it's Kiria was Saga, Bafa Hill. A way the world it chased my kid, and not a way which Kiro Saga is a way the world it chirped for the Bapo Raja. I get by side that 
Gib gerade halt. Wie war die Teste? Ich sage dir, mein Bauer hat gedacht, ich mache ein Bauer zu dir, ich kann mir keine Mutter, ich gehe gut. Das ist es. Papa ist ein Videostück. Er hat gut. Ich habe da einen Rückzeit. Ich habe da keine Ahnung, aber ich habe da einen Ballad, aber ich habe da einen Kühl. Ich habe mir gesagt, ich habe da einen Kühl. Bei uns war der Ehe. ขจิกกะขจิกกะเทกมะเนเชเชเชกะยุกุเรยุเฮเตระเอนะปาสปะชีเดดิชเปเกตัตตะดูกะเรยุอิสเปเชเชวะอิวปาเชสปะสะกะ
Jesus said, "Oh, so talk about Eo Kukayu. Go to be Malachi, Baget, to Gaza, Eka Bahimishta, dear in a go here, Pijere, which he wrote, and Neo Koskirai to Gaza, he had. Talk about Eo Kukayu. It's a risk for the bigger old guy. And you got a Gil Sul, come out of Moshebuka, Sandy, or Sugaga, eight so cricket tables, Karakaratalashi, but they can look Taraku. Yagi, Ashpot, take him called at Westbrook, Uncle Mister Talashi, but they can look at the cook. They are a water cook, Karek, a natural gas, but they can all eat a gaku. A bill of a Bahati Sulu. Saha, you. You pass here, you cut a idiot away, who are marvel of a shish mule. It was to get taught, but a teacher of idiot will get Margaret Cola, Maza Bartlett, a challenge to take his way. Sergeant at Arms. Sergeant at Arms, indeed. Anyways, you, a Bahamish. Or teacher would a Balea week, you have a new command. A Bahamishi, a Baratia. But it was so we cook, but it was a good case. We cook, you is my a mass base. You will get to the bait to what you have. We do go over here, you. You know, we gotta always have God in it. Master Shea, you, yes, so I, my Ruhachi type, that of a cone made of you, a old guy, Jim. But he's to the pig, okay, Graham? Biuka reads you get. Master Shira, you get to the pig, but I think. Masabe dip. A dalu for a dukti test of you. You, you, Koyak with that. Babaj do that. The conscious hour in the boy, you look at Bill, but I got a son. Who took to what? No, but dip, Bawaka dip. Enough. I don't come, may you. I say about Kodesh Baiga would kill. Can a boy was too cocky, I get no one better to come or give the whole gap. A rich shone at Kutaweu and Cargo for home. Thank you, Senator. Floor recognizes Secretary of the House, Okro. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body, guests. I get a Baola, it took my charge. Not debate, by the way. I mean, that's what it's all about, I guess. Yeah. Debating your opinions. Ikkadish, Kadish, Ikkadish, Pilai, Shumpa, Bastikish, and I'm getting up. In my Polish, Balaka Gazu. They do cut the way of Wolves, the king. Ikkadish, Kadish, in Kowolish, the Gapalik Kadish, in all of the big two Kailing Lords and I. And Kotkashi, as I'm saying, you're trying to convince the ones that are. On the fence, as I've said. As I've said, it could be good to do that. You want to go out. And which is what it is, you're not going to hear it. More love. You're not going to go out, I think. You go out, I'm going to ask you to do this thing. Okay, go out. I'll make that motion to cease debate. A motion to cease debate. Second by Senator Nonafraid of the Lodgegrass District. Question by Senator Stewart of the Backlash District. All those in favor of seizing the bait, raise your right hand. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Motion carries with a vote of 13 yes, zero opposed, zero abstain. This brings us to the recommendations and motions for amendments at this time. So floor organizes Senator Stewart of the Black Lodge District. I, I, um, Mr. Speaker, at the time I should have uh, made it clear that um, the amendments were discussed in committee and the recommendation was to pass it with the with the set amendments and i think um some of us were i mean a lot of us were here 
So I think the understanding was that we're ready. We're ready to bring it down to the floor. Final, final roll call vote. We can get the motion. All right, floor organized. Senator goes ahead. Uh, yes, uh, 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 just just to add, uh, there were 10 of us, uh, 10 members that were present in yesterday's Natural Resources Committee, mem committee and the vote was 8-0, eight, uh, 8 yes, 0 no, 0 abstain. I wrote it down. So. All right, for the record. For approval. For approval there, that's the record for approval. Floor organize the Secretary of the House of Crow. Okay, uh, what hap needs to happen now is we need to adopt that amendment. That has not been done yet, so therefore, that has to be adopted on the floor. Uh, as uh, that is, it's in your packet now. The red line version is on top, and the black line version is the following page. So therefore, that needs to be adopted uh, on the floor. Floor organized, Senator Stewart of the Black Lives District. Okay, at this time, Mr. Speaker, I just. Um, I want to make a motion to pass the amended version that was discussed in committee that we voted on, Mr. Speaker. A motion on the floor for the amended version by Senator Stewart of the Black Lodge District. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Senator Goes Ahead. Do we have a question? We'll stop right there for a second. Parliamentarian, we have the amendments that were presented in committee. And at this time, we're bringing them on the floor. Do the amendments need to be read into record at this time? Question? Just go, go ahead, Senator Stewart. <clears throat> Can we? Um, maybe if we need to rephrase it, I believe, um, a substitute version or wait, wait and wait second reading. Okay. Substitute version. All right, so it'll be the, not the amended version, but the substitute version? The, the substitute version. Okay. So your motion on the floor at this time is the wave second reading, reading with the Substitute, Substitute version. version and going to final roll call vote. Going to final roll call vote. vote. Okay. Senator goes ahead. Do you is your second for that motion? Uh, yes. Okay. So your second. Now that brings us to question. Question. Question by Senator Not Afraid of the Lodgegrass District. <clears throat> All those in favor of waiving the second reading of the sub with the substitute version, moving on to final roll call vote, raise your right hand. Senator Prepaid. All those opposed, all those abstaining, motion to waive second reading with substitute version and move on to final roll call vote passes with a vote of 13, yes, zero, no, zero abstain. At this time, we'll move on to final roll call vote. Senator Pretty Paint. Pretty Paint, Black Lodge, yes. Stuart, Black Lodge, yes. Other Medicine, Reno, yes. Not afraid, Oshkosh, yes. Probably got blood, you guys know. Deep Green, now, yes. Goes there, Bapo, yes. Real bird, mighty few, no. Backbone, mighty few, no. Stewart, mighty few, yes. Old Kurosh, did you yes? Senator 
Senator Backbone's vote was no. Shane Reno abstained. Yes. Uh, clarification. I don't think Senator Not Afraid's microphone caught that. I don't. Okay, for the record, Senator Not Afraid of the Big Horn District had voted yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Am I correct, Senator? Yes. Secretary of the House, what's your report? With a vote of nine yes. Three no and one abstain. Resolution carries nine yes, three no, one abstain. Floor organizing executive legal counsel, Mr. Watt. Uh, again, Mr. Um, Speaker, Mr. Secretary, members of the body. Thank you very much for all the time and attention to this matter, uh, to all the time and attention to the committee. Um, and as an observer, I would just wanted to say uh, uh, what an uh, impressive and wise uh, debate that you just conducted. Thank you very much. Thank you. This moves us on to next item. All right, uh, we're without quorum, we're at 12. What we can do is we'll break with our food's waiting. We'll take a recess to eat at this time. We're gonna call on Senator Not Afraid of the Lodge Grass District to pray for the food and then we will take a lunch break to see if Senator Alden will show up so we can have a quorum. Thank you. Go ahead, Senator. Not afraid of falling through the line. Okay, I guess uh, give her, give the staff a couple of minutes to set up, and then we will start lunch. All right, we will have a quorum, Senator Holden, and we'll be here within the next five minutes. So we'll eat and then go right back into the uh, confirmation. <laughs> 